I'm an inventor 2024. And what you're going to see for those of you that have taken an iLogic training class, this is our classic screwdriver. Okay, and you can see in here that it's a very simple design. Okay, I've got the body, and you can see here it says it's a multi bit. I can have the bit down here at the bottom. And then I have the cap at the end that defines what, you know, what type it is. Now, if I look at my iLogic here, you can see that I've got two different rules and these rules are fairly straightforward. So if I were to actually, you know, I'll take a look at, at this, um, I'll show you this first. If I go to my tools and you see here my options, if I go to my little options pull down, this is where I mentioned the iLogic configuration. And you can see in here that I've defined where are my external rules living. I use iLogic VB as my extension. It doesn't have to be, but it just tells me what it is better than a text file. And then what type of logging and information. The security options I mentioned here <coughs> allows me to go through and say, I want you to inspect rules for malicious code. or what event triggers do you want me? And I have mine set to be all events enabled. Oftentimes, they want you to say all events enabled except after open and close. Now, the reason for that is, and I'll, I'll say this briefly, not that I have ever done this myself, said tongue in cheek. If you establish a rule, and you're trying to test it and you have it run after opening a file if that rule were to be stuck in a loop every time you open a file it runs the rule the rule runs in a loop you can't do anything you have crash inventor you get back out launch inventor open the file it runs the rule the rule goes back into a loop do you see what you just did to yourself as i said never did that to myself so oftentimes they want you to tell it, don't do things after open or close because you get stuck in a loop, not until you fully tested it, okay? So I just wanted to point those out before you get too deep into, into doing things. So let's take a look at this simple file. And if I were to look at my parameter sets here, you can see here that I've got some very simple parameters. One is the screwdriver color, one is the screwdriver cap, and one is the bit type. Okay. And if I were to go through and set this, like my screwdriver color, if I were to look, you know, if I go in and change this from blue to black, we can see that it automatically changes the color of my screwdriver. Now, if I were to go look at one of these iLogic rules, such as cap type, I can see that it's actually going through and saying that if the screwdriver cap, and this in blue is one of my user parameters right here, you can see the screwdriver cap, okay? If it's, ex if it's set to extra long, then do a bunch of this stuff. So. I'm deleting some per, some components, adding some components, changing some parameters, and then adding a bunch of constraints. If it's long, then I do something else. And if it's standard, then I do something else altogether. So what you can see here, and I'll give you kind of a brief overview. This is the iLogic editor. On the left-hand side, you'll see a number of these, what we call snippets. Snippets are very simple. These are when you want to do something to a parameter or maybe a feature or a component itself or an I property. These are predefined pieces of code that you can just double click and it will put the code in place. And then you just fill in the right information, such as in this case, project and part group. Up here, you can see this is my model tree, and I can look at my different model parameters, user parameters, part components. 
I can look at the file tree, what I'm doing, or the files that are available in my assembly. Different options, different things, different wizards. And then my configuration where I can look at specifically some of the constants and keywords, so like if then else statements, different subroutine statements, different mathematical operations, things like that. Okay. So key to understanding iLogic is it automates what you do in Inventor. Inventor can't typically do something that you can't regularly do in Inventor. So if you're thinking, geez, I, you know, there, there isn't the tool to do this in Inventor, but maybe I could write a piece of code to do that. The answer to that more often than not is no. We are simply automating the processes that you would normally do to make them much more efficient. So in this case, this would be no different than you deleting a component, then adding a new one in, then adding some constraints to it and tying it down. We're just doing it all in one shot. Okay. Then if I looked at bit type, you can see this is a very simple rule and this just simply says, hey, if the bit type is flat, then I want you to put in the flat bit. If it's Robertson, then I want you to put in the bit called Robertson. If it's Torx, Torx standard, okay? And then I add some constraints to it. So what you can see from here is that if I look at these parameters and I say the screwdriver, we're all over the bit type and we're looking at this component down here at the bottom, okay? But if I were to say, oh, it's a Robertson, we can see that the bit changes. Same thing goes with the cap up at the end. If I were to say it's extra long or long, we can see it change and kind of fix it or it goes with the right color. So if I say standard, okay, and you can see that end just changing sizes and shape. And this is all, I'm not doing anything. I'm just simply telling it what I want. Now, I could do it in these parameters, but one of the other things that we can also do is very simply we can use something called a form so if i were to go in here and say add a form what's very nice is i can just go grab if i look at parameters i can say hey, grab all three of these parameters and bring them in okay. now i have this nice little form that i can sit right on my screen and i can do the same thing this is just me changing the parameters but from an on-screen form without having to go into the parameter dialog box, okay? So you can see here as I'm changing any of this, it's real time updating my design. So we're gonna talk a little bit more about forms as we get into some more advanced things here. And again, I've done both of these as internal rules and an internal form, but you can see here that, you know, we also have, you know the ability to do global and global forms which i don't have any and external rules and if i look at my external rules you can see that i've got a bunch of these coming down and all these are different ones such as save as dxf save as pdfs show form rule update properties components new text document round tubes i've got you know One's from a great developer on the internet called Clint Brown. He's got a, a different ways of centering and arranging dimensions or creating drawing or deleting sick dimensions, just different things that, that we can go, go play with. 